As a business owner, have you ever been told you must do SEO, search engine optimization? That sounds pretty intimidating, doesn't it? I actually hate that word because I think it's riddled with robots and engines and misunderstanding around algorithms. What I've learned for sure over my 10 years is that it's all about the human. And I'm going to show you how to connect with human through Google data. That's the good stuff. Okay, so you've launched your website. Ta-da! I got a website, woohoo, right? <laughs> you are not done. <laughs> Just like with anything, right? Marketing is never done. You're always sharpening your knife. You're always thinking about different ways that you can get found. The thing is, is that SEO, the word SEO, is riddled with snake oil salesmen and shysters and people who use fancy phrases to impress you. One of the things we talk about is the money is in the mystery. The mystery being when I come and I roll up to you and I say, I can do your SEO, I'm gonna give you a big report that's super impressive. We use lots of fancy words like optimization, keyword density, heat maps, conversion rates. Man, I'm gonna roll out the list of acronyms and you're gonna be super impressed. So you're like, yeah, okay, this guy seems to know or this girl seems to know what she's talking about. You write the check and you wait. And you wait and you wait and they say they're doing all this stuff on the website. And you're like, I'm not seeing anything coming in here. I don't see the phone ringing. I don't see more leads on my website. What's going on? This is a systemic issue in my profession. And the reason that I do what I do with Findability University is because I'm sick and tired of the misunderstanding and the fraud that happens around SEO. So what we're gonna talk about today is why do we even do this? If you said to yourself, I don't get business that way, I've heard it a gazillion times. Maybe it's because you haven't tried or you had the wrong advice. So we're gonna go into Google and I'm gonna type in something that I'm interested in. So let's take a look here. Um, okay, how about coffee? I love a coffee. Now, we think about it, we Google coffee and you'll see that we get the localized coffee and then you're like, no, 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 that's not what I want. I want, co I want a latte coffee latte and I'm going to put Denver and I'm going to put best. There we go. Now we're getting something good. Denver's essential coffee shops. Ooh, I like that. 60 new coffee shops to seek out in Denver. Love it. Best coffee shops in Denver. 15 best lattes in Colorado. What? 25 coffee shops you'll instantly fall in love with. Isn't that a great line? 10 best coffee shops in Denver. 10 hottest <laughs> 10 hottest coffee shops. They should put 10 hottest baristas in coffee shops. I, that would be my first choice. Okay, so we're looking at these things. Now, I have typed in coffee, latte, Denver, and best. Four keyword phrases. So when I say keyword, I mean keyword phrases that are knitted together to make a perfect search result. Now, if I own a coffee shop, one of the coffee places I spoke to was Dutch Brothers Coffee. And they are the coolest coffee place I have ever seen. They, I mean, they hire these wonderful, energetic college students. They have great ethics. They give back to their community. It is a cool coffee shop. And I'm like, I want to find those kind of coffee shops, those hole in the walls, the dive. I love a dive. I know you maybe, maybe that doesn't look real clear right now, but I love a dive. So I want to find a cool coffee shop. I can go work for the day. And Starbucks are like so crowded, like my ears are just buzzing and I can't have meetings, you know, over Zoom because it's just too noisy. So I like to find those little tucked away coffee shops. So I'm going to go and I'm going to turn to my best friend named Google and I'm going to share a little bit of myself. Uh, coffee Latte Denver. Now I might put best coffee shop, best coffee shop to work in. Mm. Okay, so I've got that. So I'm gonna do best coffee shop. Ooh, interesting. Now, the number one search result on my drop down here is best coffee shop near me. The near me is a very powerful trigger. Near me tells Google that within a certain radius of where I'm at right now, I need a best cup of coffee. Now, I have a tool that's installed on my computer right now that gives me the search volume for each of those drop downs. So I can see that best coffee shop near me gets 9,900 searches per month. 9,900. 
that's a lot. <laughs> and if I own a coffee shop in this area, and I call it just Dutch Brothers, Dutch Brothers this and Dutch Brothers that and Dutch Brothers this, I'm not findable for that. When I was back at Yahoo, I'll never forget, one of the guys showed up, rolled in, he worked for Starbucks. He's like, you realize that Starbucks didn't rank for coffee for a very long time. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Why wouldn't Starbucks rank for coffee? We never use the word. We only use the word Starbucks. Aha, right? Now they had to go back in and have everything be Starbucks coffee. What? Because they just wanted to be called Starbucks. But by leaving out the coffee element, they made themselves unfindable. And as they were building their brand, now they're on every corner. You can throw a rock and hit a Starbucks. But before, they were trying to build a name for themselves. Now, if you're a small mom and pop, and you've got an amazing coffee place with the best latte on the planet, great for working at, how do you compete? You compete by creating content around what I'm already thinking. We call it get them into church and then convert them. You gotta use their language first. I want the best latte in Denver. And then as a coffee shop owner, you're gonna start creating content around the best coffee shop in Denver. You're gonna take a picture of cool people working in cool places, maybe you got special events. You need to make yourself cool. You get to call yourself the best. It's okay, no one has to validate it. You know that you're the best coffee shop. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna just gonna go back and say, okay, I'm gonna look at these drop downs. These are called suggestive search. These are the drop downs that you see when you start typing something in Google. So I'm gonna put coffee shop and then I'm gonna put Denver. Now you'll see here that I'm getting a whole list of places that I can go. But as a coffee shop owner, I need to be an expert in coffee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna put best latte. Now you'll see here, I have a whole list of search results. I have best latte machine, best latte near me, best latte flavors, best latte at Starbucks, <laughs> I'm getting funny, best latte art, best latte cups, best latte coffee makers, recipes, and best coffee latte at Dunkin' Donuts. So as a business owner, I have a couple decisions to make. I can either show up where the people are hanging out under these keywords, or I can make up something totally unfindable. We're gonna call it Coffee Palooza. And everyone's gonna be coming on Tuesday to our Coffee Palooza. And we're gonna have bands and acoustic guitars. And then I put it out there on the internet and it's like crickets. Coffee Palooza is a name that you made up. It's brilliant, genius, best idea for a coffee event ever. The problem is no one cares. It sounds great, but you gotta tell me, the best coffee shop in Denver is having Coffee Palooza, and here's why you need to come. So when I search for best coffee in Denver, I see your Coffee Palooza and I'm like, done! I will go there and work and then I'll stay for the band. So the problem is, is that we get so much into our head around making things unique. Remember, uniqueness is the enemy of findability. The more unique you are, the less findable you are. We don't want that. We want your stuff to be found. But sometimes as business owners, we're like, that's so boring. Like sometimes if I talk about SEO or keywords one more time, I'm gonna poke my eye out. I just can't. And then I have to go into Google, I type in SEO, and I get a whole list of new ideas that I hadn't thought about talking about. And this is really, as a business owner, use Google as your hat trick. Use Google as your shortcut to a human mind. If you wanna get in front of coffee lovers, then you've gotta connect with coffee lover language. And Google has been very nice to architect and gather all of this content for us that is now just at our fingertips. It's fantastic, it's wonderful. So you see all the search volume numbers. So I can see that Best Latte Machine gets 1,600 searches per month. I can see that Best Latte Near Me gets 260 searches per month. Now, on a monthly basis, that's probably not knocking your socks off, but at 260 times 12 for the year, that's a lot of search volume. So, okay, Best Latte Near Me, I can, I can work that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think, I'm gonna create a blog post for best latte machine. And that gets 1600 searches a month. Now, as a coffee shop owner, I know all the best coffee machines. So I am an expert, right, a professor in coffee. I know all the best coffee machines. And oh, by the way, I sell half a dozen of here in my shop. So now I'm gonna write a blog post about how to select the best coffee machine for the best latte. Cool, that sounds like a good idea. So I'm gonna write, you know, I'm gonna write that, maybe SEO it a little bit, and then put it up on my blog. Now you can take that and put an image on it. 
and that image is going to be called Best Latte Machine Denver .jpg. And I'm going to upload it and I'm going to name that blog Best Latte Machine Denver. Do you see what I'm doing here? I am pointing the graphic, the content, and the inspiration around what people are already searching. What? We work so hard as business owners, entrepreneurs, we kill ourselves coming up with marketing that's unique and beautiful and we spend a ton of money on tchotchkes and, and, and brochures and at the end of the day, it matters to us but it just doesn't matter to anyone else. What matters to me is I want the best latte machine. And who's going to be out there? Who's going to show up and pop up and tell me they're the experts? Now I'm in Denver. I don't want to fly somewhere to get it. And I don't really want it from Amazon. I want to buy it from a local retailer. And I see your blog comes up under best latte machine, done. And Google's going to match you because they're in Denver and you're in Denver. What? So you have to think strategically like the searcher, bring them into church, their words, convert them with your offerings. Very important that findability is really the opposite of traditional marketing. Traditional marketing has taught us, ooh, big numbers. I want lots of drive time. That's why I buy radio or lots of, you know, where in the magazine should I buy the cover, the back cover, or where should I have my trade show? Do I put it in the front? Do I put it in the very back? Do you know the best place in a trade show? Not at the front, which is the most expensive, of course. It's back by the bathrooms. <laughs> it's that where everyone's got to go there sometime in the day. And you have a coffee, little coffee cart back there, and you have some conversations. That's the best place to have a trade show booth because it's where the people are. Okay. So think about that it's the same thing here is as business owners, I want you to think maybe there's only 20 keywords I need to rank for. 20, not 10,000. When you rank under those 10, you've created blogs, maybe some videos, maybe some social shares, and you start seeing yourself come up there, then you pick another keyword and then another keyword. And you don't have to go into a fancy tool, just go to Google, see what's in the drop downs, and pick from there. You're already 10 times ahead of any competitor who is in your area talking about coffee. So be mindful, use Google and these suggestive searches strategically. Create your blogs, your social content based on what it is I want as your future customer, not how you see your marketing strategy. If you enjoy this content, please hit subscribe and the little bell next to it so you get alerted to my latest videos. Guys, get out there, start Googling, look at those drop downs, and create content that is truly connected based on what I want, not you. Whoa, whoa.